barbecue phosphates. What are they and do they make a difference when it comes to cooking your proteins? Let's find out. Today we have LC Barbecue's brand new product, Rainmaker. This is barbecue phosphates. According to this bottle, these barbecue phosphates are going to maximize your meat's natural moisture retention, freshness, and overall improvement of tenderness. That's one of the things that I can honestly say I'm really excited for about this product to see if we get that natural retention of moisture. And I also like that this doesn't add any flavor. So this is going to be a really good comparison that we're going to do today. Now, in order to do our comparison today, I've got two chicken halves and we are going to be injecting both of these chicken halves. The only difference is one of these is going to have the injection plus phosphates in it. And we're going to see if we can tell the difference with the natural moisture retention, with the tenderness and with all those things that we're looking for. Now, I did talk to Philip himself and he told me that he recommends we try the phosphates on either chicken or brisket. And today we decided we wanted to do the chicken just to see if that breast gets that nice moisture retention. Today we're following the directions on the LC Barbecue's Foul Play Chicken Injection. The only difference is we're going to split the recipe in half just so we can make sure that there's enough injection for both of these birds. We're going to try and keep everything as consistent as we can down to the jar that we're mixing this in. And don't forget, on our second batch here, the only difference is we're adding two teaspoons of the barbecue phosphates. I'm going to shake up our injection and our phosphates just to make sure that everything gets evenly distributed here. Now, one of the things that I did here, I talked to one of my friends, Renee Gonzalez, chicken cook of the year last year with IBCA, and he told me that sometimes this will clump, and he made the recommendation to actually mix it in the injection. So shout out to Renee for helping me out with that tip. That's why we're doing it like this today. Now I'm going to add 10 ounces of chicken broth to our injection. And the one thing that I do want to tell everybody is that these two chicken halves did come from the same exact bird. I just split them off camera, but this is indeed from the same exact bird. Now I'm just going to mix everything up again. Now we'll add 10 ounces of chicken broth to the injection that has no phosphates in it. I'm just going to go ahead and mix this up one more time. And now I'm just going to start injecting my chicken here. The reason that we're using the one without phosphates first is because I don't want there to be any phosphates in this at all. I don't want there to be the possibility that some got in here and helped the moisture here on this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to pump this one full. I'm going to pump it as much as this chicken will take. As soon as it starts squirting back at me, I'm definitely going to stop and then we'll move on to the one with the phosphates. Now, while I am concentrating a lot on the breast, I am going to go ahead and pump this leg full and this thigh as well as the wing. I just want to make sure that we get plenty in that breast because typically that's where you'll see that people can dry out chicken the easiest. I'm not saying that you do or you don't, but whenever I see dry chicken, it's definitely starting at the chicken breast. Now, so far, if you look at the difference in these two birds, you can 100% tell that we injected it. So this one over here has a much plumper looking breast. The leg and the thigh are huge, and this wing is also pumped up as well. So just something to take note of when you're injecting, you are putting a lot of liquids in there. And the reason that we want to try these phosphates is just to make sure that the natural chicken juices and everything stays in along with all this beautiful injection we just pumped in. Now we're moving on to the bird that we're injecting with the injection as well as the barbecue phosphates. Again, we're just trying to see if we can find a difference in these two birds in the end. We're pumping every single part of this bird. I want to taste that injection. You know, I've actually used LC products before. I haven't used this specific injection, so I'm really excited to try it out today. Thanks again to Philip and LC Barbecue for sending us these products. I am going to put a link in the description if you guys are interested in trying any of this stuff out. Again, we really appreciate the support on you sending us all this amazing stuff. And just so you guys get an idea of how much injection we use, this is how much we have left. I told you guys earlier, I'm just injecting until it starts spitting back at me. Last but not least, we're going to go over top of these birds with a little bit of this certified dry rub. Again, this is a product that I've never tried, but I am really excited to see how it tastes. I tasted it 
out of the bottle on my hands and it just tastes amazing. I'll tell you what, it comes out of the bottle really well and I'm super duper loving that color that I'm seeing on this chicken so far. Now that we're done with the preparation on our chicken, we are gonna put these in the refrigerator for around 30 minutes just to sit and hang out for a little bit. I want that injection to kind of work into these proteins and then we're gonna get outside and get them on the grill. Just over 30 minutes later, we're gonna put our chicken halves on our Weber kettle. I've got two Weber charcoal baskets in here with B&B briquettes and it's running right around 350 degrees which is gonna be perfect for these birds. This first bird that I'm putting down is the one that has the sodium phosphates in it. I am going to use my spatula here just to kind of bunch everything up a little bit. I want this bird to look really nice while it's cooking. Now I've got my second bird on. This is the one with no phosphates. It is injected with that foul play though. And the same thing, I just want to bunch everything up. I want these birds to look really beautiful. And now's the perfect time if you guys notice that there's a little bit of unevenness on your seasoning. You could re-season right now. We have the chicken here. We're not going to touch it again until it's done. After about 30 minutes on our birds, we want to open the kettle and just take a look at them. What I like to do is just make sure that I'm consistently rotating them based off of the way that the charcoal baskets are looking. I want to get an even cook on our chicken today. So just like I was saying a second ago, you could kind of see that this charcoal basket is a little bit more burned than the one on my left, your right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and grab this chicken half and I'm going to flip it around just to make sure that there's a nice even cook all the way around this bird. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Now, if I feel like I need to rotate these a little bit more throughout the cook, I absolutely will just based off of how I feel things are going. Just so you guys can get a little close up on that bird. It is looking absolutely amazing. I talked about it earlier, but I really do like the color that I'm getting from that certified barbecue rub. It's been about 45 minutes on our chicken. Now we want to check on it and I'm going to try and be really fast here because it's cold outside here in Texas and it's misting and this is probably the most disgusting weather that it's been in a while. So let's check on these. We're just going to talk about the color, how the cook is going and hopefully we're close to done. So the chicken is actually looking really, really good. I love the color that we got from that certified rub. So I'm just gonna check the deepest part of the breast and you can see that we're sitting right around 130 degrees here. So I'm gonna let these cook to about 158 degrees and then they'll carry over just a little bit. So I'm just gonna put the lid back on here. You can see that my charcoal baskets are still running nice and hot. There's plenty of fuel in there. So we're just gonna let these keep going and we'll probably check them in another 25 or 30 minutes. Both of the birds are sitting right around 160 degrees internal. So now it's time to take these off, let them rest for about five minutes and then we're gonna cut inside and see how these barbecue phosphates did. Now it's time to cut into our chicken, see if we could tell a difference in between the two half chickens, and then talk about the moisture retention, the tenderness, and all the things that the barbecue phosphates are hopefully going to add to our half chickens today. We're gonna go ahead and cut into the bird that has no phosphates in it first. And we wanna show you guys how juicy, how tender this looks. There's some injection you can see all throughout this chicken. It looks really, really nice and tender, and it still looks really, really moist in my opinion. But let's go ahead and cut the one with the phosphates open, see if we could tell a noticeable difference. And then we're gonna go ahead and take a bite of both of these, and we'll talk about the tenderness differences. Next up is gonna be the piece with the barbecue phosphates in the injection. And off the bat, in my honest opinion, I really can tell that there's more moisture in this piece of chicken. So from my angle, I see a lot of glistening, especially right here. 
and that just tells me that there's plenty of moisture in this chicken. Now, don't get me wrong. The other piece was not dry at all whatsoever, but this just really looks shimmery, shiny, and it looks extremely tender to me. So if I go ahead and squeeze here, you can see there's so much moisture coming out of that chicken. And to me, the visible difference is 100% there. My wife is right behind the camera. I'm not sure if she can see one as well, but what are you thinking on that? Yeah, I see a lot more moisture under the skin. Yeah, no, I mean, especially like right here to me. Like on this top piece right here, I feel like there's a lot of moisture in more parts of the breast than this one. So let me pull this other one a little bit closer and maybe you guys can see kind of what I'm talking about. And again, to me, from where I'm standing, it looks so glaringly obvious. So I'm going to try and point out the parts that I can tell it's just a lot better on the moisture retention, which would be right here, all the way up through these strands. And over here, again, it does look tender and it does look juicy. But this right here, you can see that a lot of the juices that are coming out are just those natural colors, which is exactly what the phosphates are supposed to do. And this is the first time I'm trying it, but I am really interested in that. So you can see that a lot of that color is the natural chicken color. Here, we're getting more of the injection coming out. So I really do feel like the phosphates did retain all those natural chicken juices in there. And this to me does look better. Now it's time to take a bite and see if we could tell any differences on the tenderness, on the juiciness inside of our mouth. First up, we're gonna take a bite of the one that does not have any phosphates in it. I mean, I gotta be honest, that's a delicious piece of chicken. It is juicy, it has that injection flavor in there. The certified rub is absolutely delicious. But I will say, as I keep chewing, it is chicken breast, even though it is moist and tender and it was cooked perfectly, it does get a little bit drier in my mouth as I keep chewing. I'm hoping that the phosphates doesn't give off that same exact texture and stays tender and it just has that juiciness throughout every single bite. Now for the piece with the phosphates inside. One million percent. One million percent. As soon as I take a bite, the juices actually just go all in my mouth and it just tastes so good. So while the phosphates don't add flavor, it definitely retains moisture. And that to me is almost the easiest comparison that we've ever done. And I'm not exaggerating about it. I am going to ask my wife to come up and try it herself. And I just want to make sure that I'm not in my own head because to me, this is really, really simple. I can easily tell the difference. She might not be on camera. You might not see her take a bite, but she will give you her opinion. And she's also going to comment down below and she's going to tell you what she thought. To me, it's a clear cut winner. The phosphates absolutely do their job. Yeah, you can tell the difference, right? But you can kind of see it in the fibers on the chicken. Like it almost feels like it's just much more tender and a lot less dry. I mean, yeah, I mean you can see the, you can see the fibers right there. Yeah. Like I wish they could see that in the camera. Like that one, you can just tell they're all separated. This one is all like still close together. Yeah, and it just feels... It just really feels so much more tender in my mouth. And in all honesty, it really truly is crazy. I will be the first one to tell you that I kind of didn't believe in this, right? I didn't know what to believe. I've never used phosphates myself, but it makes sense. It really truly makes sense. LC Barbecue just absolutely killed it on the circuit last year. Killed it. The head cook of the year for CBA here in Texas. The guy knows what he's doing. Let's be honest. So if you guys want to try some of these phosphates and any of the stuff that I use today, I will leave a link down below. Thanks again to Philip for sending us all these products. I'm mind blown right now. I'm going to eat the rest of this chicken, but I'm truly mind blown. Something that I didn't think was going to make a difference at all is the easiest, most landslide win of any comparison we've ever done on the channel. As always, we really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Thanks. And we'll see you on the next one. Crazy. That's crazy.